Hi, and welcome back to the Vagrant from Scratch course. In this video, we're going to explore some of the typical workflows involved with using Vagrant and also look at some of the default Vagrant conventions. Let's get started. The typical workflow for your Vagrant environment will of course begin with getting your environment configuration. In other words, getting your Vagrant file. The two ways in which you can do this are to either retrieve an existing Vagrant file for your project or create a new one from scratch, which you can do by using the Vagrant init command. With an initial Vagrant file in place, you can then customize it to your liking so that the environment described is exactly how you want it. Once you finalize your Vagrant file, you can then bring up your environment by using the Vagrant up command. Obviously, once you have your environment up and running, you then do your project development and testing work. To connect to virtual machines within your environment, you use the Vagrant SSH command. Once you finish working for the day, you can pack up your environment by running the Vagrant halt command. When you want to start working again, you just issue the Vagrant up command again. Repeatedly bringing up the environment and shutting it down will form the bulk of your environment workflow. This will continue until you reach a point where you no longer actually need the environment. At that point, you can just delete it by running the vagrant destroy command. In most cases, doing this is fine, because if you need to bring up the environment, you can just issue the vagrant up command again. And of course, throughout the life cycle of your environment, you will be issuing the vagrant status command. Each of these commands must be entered from the root directory of your project. If you enter them outside of a vagrant project, they will throw an error. When it comes to boxes, the first part of your workflow will of course be to get the relevant boxes into your local box cache. You can manually add a box to your local cache by using the vagrant box add command. Unlike the previous commands we've seen before, which have to be executed from a directory containing a vagrant file, this one can be executed anywhere. That's why I've labeled it in a different color. When you use the vagrant up command, this will take care of adding the boxes required for your environment to your local cache automatically, so you don't have to worry about anything. As part of creating the Vagrant environment, a copy of each of the boxes required for your specific environment is made. These copies act as the starting points for your environment's VMs. At any given time, the publisher of a box may issue an updated version. To update your version of a local box, you can run the command Vagrant Box Update. This won't affect existing environments, but will affect new ones which are created. If your Vagrant environment is already running, you'll have to destroy and recreate it to get the benefits of the update in the new version of the box. When you destroy your environment, you're only removing the copies of the boxes which were made for your environment. The original boxes still remain in your local cache. If you want to remove those, you need to run the command vagrant box remove. Additionally, at any given time as part of your workflow, you may also choose to list your current boxes or simply prune the outdated ones. There are a couple of other commands I want to cover that you may use as part of your workflow. The first is vagrant global dash status. This command does not have to be run from a project directory. It can be run from anywhere. It shows the status of all of the environments which vagrant is aware of. It is kind of like the vagrant status command, but instead of for a specific project, it is for all projects. The next command is vagrant ssh dash config. As you can see from the output, this command shows all of the details necessary to connect to the VMs within your environment over ssh. You will really only need this command if you want to use an alternative SSH client to the one that ships with Vagrant itself. I've shown you how to do this before in a previous video on the course, where we use the SSH client PuTTY to connect to a Vagrant virtual machine. Check that video out if you want to see the command in action. Let's cover some basic conventions you should know about when using Vagrant. The first is the name of the configuration file that you will use for your environments. It will always be called Vagrant file with a capital V. This style of naming is inherited from the Unix program Make, which calls its configuration files Make files with a capital M. In fact, this convention is also inherited by other programs such as Docker, which names its configuration files a Docker file with a capital D. Typically, you would commit your Vagrant file to source code management so that it is tracked along with the rest of your project. There are a whole bunch of other conventions you should be aware of when it comes to dealing with Vagrant VMs. Firstly, there will always be a user with root privileges called Vagrant, whose password is also Vagrant. Secondly, the VMs will be configured to use passwordless SSH, so that you can easily SSH into them. Thirdly, the hostname of the VMs will, by default, be Vagrant. We have seen in a previous video how you can customize this so that the hostname of the VM will be whatever you like. Another convention is that the entire project directory for the host machine will be synced and mounted on the virtual machine, at the path of slash Vagrant. When you destroy your environment using the vagrant destroy command, the contents of this directory are not deleted, 
so they remain safe and easily accessible. Now these are the typical conventions followed by any box issued by the Bento user and these are recommended as default by the Vagrant documentation. Boxes published by other users, even officially backed ones such as Ubuntu, are not guaranteed to follow these conventions, so it is best just to stick to those boxes provided by the Bento project as we have done throughout this course. The last thing I want to cover in this video is the .vagrant directory. This directory is created in the root directory of your project and is managed by Vagrant. It is supposed to be hidden from you. Let's take a look at the structure of the directory for the environment containing two virtual machines which we covered in an earlier video on the course. Within the .vagrant directory there is a directory called machines and within that one there are two more directories, one called CentOS VM and the other called Ubuntu VM. These are the names of the VMs as you defined them in the project vagrant file. Within each specific VM directory, there is a directory called VirtualBox. This is the only directory here right now, because in our case it is the only provider that we used. If you are using another provider such as VMware, then that would also appear here. Let's take a second and see the contents of the VirtualBox directory for one of the machines. We'll follow through the directory structure that we showed just a second ago in Windows Explorer. Now, within the VirtualBox directory are a bunch of files that are used specifically by VirtualBox. These are simply text files and to illustrate that let's open the private underscore key file in notepad. This is actually the open SSH private key that is generated for the vagrant user so that you can easily SSH into the virtual machine. Similarly, the other files are also just text files which serve their own purposes. In general, you don't need to worry about the .vagrant directory, I just thought I would show it to you so that you have a basic understanding of its structure and what it contains. There you have it. You now understand all about typical Vagrant conventions as well as some of the workflows you will find yourself using. To carry on learning even more about Vagrant, watch the next video in the course. Be sure to subscribe and even check out some of the other videos available on my channel.